This past week, I was browsing around YouTube and I came across a video by Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft where he challenged himself to build a coffee can survival kit. He gave himself four rules to follow while building this kit. Number one, the lid had to close. Number two, it had to fit in your hand. Number three, it had to include a second container. Number four, it had to include all the main categories of survivability, fire, water, food, shelter, signaling, navigation, and first aid. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. His final product was both well thought out and practical. So I decided to turn this into a challenge and try to build one of my own, differing from his as much as possible, but still making mine just as usable. With that said, Ranger Survival, please don't murder me in my sleep for borrowing your idea. I enjoyed your video and concept and I hope to do it justice with my own revision. So let's get right to it and roll the intro. What's up everybody and welcome to Northeast Preparedness. Let's get right to the meat and potatoes of this video, my coffee can survival kit. I actually opted to use a slightly different can for this. I grabbed this Benton's wafer rolls can from Aldi's because it was slightly taller and it had a metal lid that locked securely into place. The wafers inside were also delicious for a fat guy like me. On the outside, I have about 20 feet of orange paracord and it's held into place by a spring clip. I also wrapped a piece of electrical tape around the outside just to help it stay a little more waterproof. As you can see, the lid stays on perfectly well. Cracking it open, you can see we have a ton of stuff inside. Let's take a look. First off, we have a good size roll of snare wire. This is actually just picture frame wire from Walmart. It's quite thick. I can probably hold, I'd say about 50 pounds. I have a tea light candle. Some wet fire. An SOL compass. Some zip ties, a packet with some chicken broth and instant coffee, a glow stick, a roll of dental floss, a ferro rod. Fixed blade knife, a roll of duct tape, some bug spray, my second container which is just a one gallon Ziploc bag. But all of the contents from this can actually go in here if I need to boil water in the tin. A Fresnel lens. A small fishing and sewing kit. A one liter water bag. Some aqua tabs to go with the water bag. A signaling mirror. A whistle. A knife sharpener.
a Victorinox camper. Some Tinder Quicks. A full size Bic lighter and some matches. Small first aid kit with some Tylenol. Band-Aids and I believe some triple antibiotic ointment. A Mylar emergency blanket. An SOL emergency blanket. Some hand warmers. Some moleskin. Rain poncho, two feet of heavy duty aluminum foil, and a small flashlight, and then the can with the lid. With all the contents laid out, you can see that I did cover all the main categories. I've got my cutting tools in the form of the Swiss Army knife and the fixed blade knife, and also a way to keep them sharpened. I have plenty of ways to start fire with the lighter, the matches, the Fresno lens, the ferro rod, the candle, the wet fire, and the tinder quick. I have plenty of ways to signal between the signaling mirror, the whistle, and the glow stick. I have the compass for land navigation. For cordage, I have duct tape, paracord, and zip ties. For food, I did include the chicken broth, some instant coffee, some drink mixes, but I also have a way to catch more food with the snare wire, the fishing kit, and the dental floss. Plus the snare wire and dental floss can also be used as cordage. For first aid, I have my small first aid kit and the moleskin. For gathering and treating water, I do have my aqua tabs and the water bag. Plus water can be boiled inside the can. For cover, I have a rain poncho, the SOL emergency blanket, and the regular Mylar blanket. In an emergency situation, I would wrap myself in the SOL blanket and then use the normal Mylar blanket to build some sort of a cover over top. I was able to include a little bit of comfort in the form of the flashlight, the bug spray, and the hand warmers. If I do happen to catch food, I will be able to cook it either on the lid of the tin itself inside the tin or on the aluminum foil that I've included. And if I do need to dump out the kit to be able to use the tin, I do have that one gallon Ziploc bag to put everything in. When you're building a kit like this, I can't stress enough how important redundancy is. Always make sure you have more than one cutting tool more than one way to start a fire. Make sure you have more than one way to signal and more than one source of cordage. If you're only carrying one of a certain item and you end up breaking it or losing it, you're pretty much screwed. Try to always remember the saying that two is one and one is none. This kit is not to be used as a standalone kit to survive in the woods. This is more of a last ditch kit, something to throw in your car in case of emergency or to toss in the bottom of your backpack in case of an emergency. A kit like this is more to supplement a bigger kit or to just give you something when you have nothing else. That said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely leave it a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave it a thumbs down. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.